for additional 30 I, I, uh, um, yeah, what are just thoughts? Related to the motion on the floor. Going once, going twice. All right. Um, District 2, Mariah White? No. District 3, can you give some? Even when you turn sideways, they lose us. So you got to stay right on. Does that sound good? All right. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. That's most helpful. Uh, again, the amendment to the agenda passed. Uh, we now need a motion relevant to adoption of the amended agenda. I move to adopt the agenda as amended. Second. Ms. Liz Dorr moved and Ms. Dawn Page seconded the agenda, adoption of the agenda as amended. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Madam Clerk, in deference to the chair, I am going to abstain on this vote. I'm ready for the roll call when you're ready. Yes. Mariah White? No. Kenya Gibson? No. Jonathan Young? Abstain. Stephanie Rizzi? No. Friends, I, I do want to just pause real fast to recognize this is our first time back together in a while, but just request that everyone recognize appropriate decorum. Thank you. Don Page? Yes. Nicole Jones? Yes. Mr. Vice Chair, we have three notes. Yes. Colleagues? Would anyone, is anyone prepared to opine as it relates to how to proceed? Mr. Ward. So does this mean we're not having a meeting? We're gonna have a meeting. Hell or high water. Uh, is, is someone prepared to perhaps, uh, is someone who, Either, prepared, either voted either in I or no, prepared to introduce some problem solving opportunity. Mr. Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, I'm going to change my vote to a yes. Uh, 
I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, thank you, Mr. Rizzi. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we will need a member. Well, no, we deadlocked, so we we can call uh, for a new vote. So, if someone. Mr. Young, it's hard for us to hear you from down here. You're a little too close. Oh, is this better? Is this better? Thank you, Liz. Uh, I think we need to, I think we need for someone to uh, introduce a new motion to call for a new vote. I motion to call for a new vote to adopt the agenda as amended. Second. Thank you, Ms. Doerr, Ms. Page, Ms. Clark. Absent any discussion. Is there any discussion? Ms. Clark. District 1, Elizabeth Doerr. Yes. Yes. District 2, Mariah White. Yes. District 3, Kenya Gibson. Yes. District 4, Jonathan Young. Abstain. District 5, Stephanie Rizzi. Yes. District 8, Don Page. Yes. District 9, Nicole Jones. Yes. Very good, thank you colleagues. We will now commence with one hour of public comment. And I do want to invite folks, uh, if you would, perhaps we could have a, a few persons. I don't, I don't wanna have everyone on their feet all evening. So maybe if everyone will work with us, maybe a few folks will line up. And as the line is, oh, thank you. Michelle is gonna circulate a, or someone already has. Very good. So if perhaps, may I ask this of, of an RPS staff person, in lieu of having everybody have to stand out there for 40 minutes, hey Mike, uh, 40 minutes, an hour, if maybe if you could just show your hand, if you want to speak, if you want to speak, if you, if you could show your hand so an RPS staff person can come around, looks like that's going to be Sade, is going to come around and obtain your name in the order that you will speak in lieu of having folks have to stand for an hour. Does that work for everybody? And the only other request regards one that I spoke to just a moment ago. I do want to plead with everyone in, in respect to the speakers and the attendees, if you would refrain from clapping or from making many, any noise, any audible noise that would preclude persons from hearing. With that, uh, Ms. Mines, take us off. Good evening, Honorable Hi. School Board Oh, I'm sorry. No, Reverend, I apologize. Uh, Ms. Lilly. I was just reminding you that we need to dedicate the time frame and Ms. Clark. Cor correct. Sorry. So, we have a total of an hour and uh, we have in person, it's, I'm sorry, remind me, is it two minutes for you? Somebody go. Uh, thank you, Ms. Page, or former chair. Three minutes, three minutes if you're speaking as an individual. If you're speaking on behalf of the group, five minutes. Uh, I apologize for interrupting you, ma'am. Please. Greetings, honorable school board representatives. First of all, we appreciate you all coming out and meeting with us. I am Reverend Robin Mines, president of the Swansboro West Civic Association, a 1976 graduate of George Wood High School. I am here today to ask you, the school board, to do the right thing, to compromise with the mayor and city council, to build a new George with High School as soon as possible, which can be done now because of the current delay by 2025. We support the board's decision on schools building schools. The decision to do so at the time, though, is suspect and reinforced by your decision not to engage us in the resolution and to flat out dismiss the mayor's offer to compromise with no discussion. You also never discussed the budget to cover this particular issue with the city council prior to that. So we're just trying to understand the total reason for the resolution and your resistance to getting George Wood built as soon as possible. George Wood has been on the facilities master plan since 2002. Many deficiencies with Georgia High School fire safety codes, structural issues, 
And prior to 2015, we have always been in the rear with our CIP budget for maintenance projects. This is the same conversation the school board had in 2009 about building schools. We did not have the capacity or infrastructure then, and we don't have it now, but we rather continue to feed the public this false narrative. We received a letter 219-2021 and 513-2021 from the city administration that if we start the process now, an effective, efficient, and very intentional process, the new George Wood High School can open August 2024. That was the promise. But because of all the politics and all the fighting in within our government, this deadline has been pushed to 2025. If you do not do the right thing by our children and compromise, we're asking you to compromise while you develop your departments to build schools so that George Wood can be built without delay. By then, your other schools will be able to follow along as scheduled instead of, but if you delay George Whip, the rest of the schools in the city are gonna, gonna be delayed. I have pictures across the front here that shows you the building that's falling apart, sunken floors, chipped and cracked walls, foundations being cracked, mold and mildew, unsecured doors. The school was erected before, before I was born and I will be 63 years old this month. It cannot hold upgraded technology. Ask kids to deserve better. How can we expect them to compete in a global economy if we can't even offer them a decent education and a great learning environment? I ask you again to please put aside your differences with any public official that you have personal feelings against. Put aside the politics. Step away from your special interest group, interest group that you are supporting and focus on our children and our community. We deserve better with Can't Wait. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Rep. Thank you Reverend Mines. Uh, again, I'm gonna make one, maybe third time's a charm, one more plea of everyone. If you please, in respect to the speakers, could uh, refrain from any applause or any other audible noise. Councilman Jones, yes sir. Good evening. My name is Michael Jones. I am the ninth district representative uh, on city council. Um, I just want to share some numbers with you. 131, 547, 303. Those are time, those are times on the clock. Those are the numbers of the enrollment at this school. Fifth district has 131 students from the 5th district. 547 are from the 8th district. Yeah. 303 are from my district, the 9th district. These young folk deserve different. They just do. They just do. If these were not children from particular neighborhoods, I know that the conversation would go different because I see the conversations we have in City Hall. It's always easy to kick the can down the road and say let's wait and let's delay when it doesn't impact your community or your constituents. That's a reality. To say this is not a black and white issue is erroneous. And it's called. These children are white and brown children from not south of the James, but from the south side of Richmond that has been redlined, underfunded, and simply not supported in forward mobility. I dare to think if that if this was an issue of Holton being rebuilt, or another school in the first being rebuilt or a school in the second or third being built, or the fourth, Fox, I think, I guarantee you this conversation would be going completely different. It just would be. To summarily dismiss representative residents of the city is a sure 
neglect of your responsibility as elected officials to come in from the onset and say we're going, only going to have a 30 minute public period and then go through some histrionics on moving it to an hour. On council, we would just buckle down, have a red bull, and hear everyone that wishes to speak. We may limit their time, but everyone in here that wishes to speak, even if it goes past the hour, you should listen to them because they are the people that voted you into office. Well, only three of you. All I'm saying is, is I have seen the inequities in the city and in the city government, and it's disgusting. Everyone talks about equity until it's time to be equitable. And all I'm asking is this, because I support schools building schools. I think I voted for it. But what I don't support is finding as adults, because this, this is what we teach our young people when there's a disagreement. Instead of handling it with guns or with fists, we want them to sit down and talk it out. But what are you exhibiting? What are you exhibiting as the adults, as the elected officials, that you won't sit down and have an honest conversation to get to the teleos, the desired end, to find a solution to build this school as cost effectively and as soon as possible? And so the only thing I would say, let, 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 me just, let me just say this, for everyone who knows how to build a school, the cost of construction between the counties and the city is different. It is. No, it is. Trust me. I know, because I've built stuff. I've built stuff. It is. It is. It's not the same on building on an open patch of grass versus having to come into the city and construct. And if not, put the numbers out. So, if you can build something by 25, so improve. If you can get it done, all we want is a new school. Why? Because you've heard the hashtag. With can't wait. But the reality is, with should not wait. Treat this process if you and your children and your grandchildren had to come to this school. When the children of George Whip go to other schools and see what those schools look like, because they do in athletic competitions every single week, they see the difference. And they experience the difference. So I would just ask you, my friends, my colleagues on the school board, let's find a peaceful solution to get the school built. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Jones, and I uh, would ask for any persons that I don't know, if perhaps you'd be uh, so generous to introduce yourself and advise if you're speaking on your behalf or on behalf of a group. Sir? Good evening. My name is James J.J. Minor, and I'm the president of Richmond, Virginia Branch and ACT. And I want to say thank you, Reverend Jones, for giving that sermon. We need your death. Um, there's a lot that I want to say, but I'm just going to say a few things because I'm totally disappointed in some of you all. We elected you all to do your job. I don't see a problem with compromise because, number one, you don't even have a plan. You don't have a plan. You can write it down. I don't care who's texting to have you, whatever group you're talking to or texting from computer to phone. You don't have a plan. The city has a plan. The mayor and council are willing to work with you all because guess what? The longer you wait, the more the construction cost is going to come, go up by millions. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Are you smarter? Are you smarter than a fifth grader? The longer you wait, the more the construction costs are going to go up, all because you want to be in a movie with child's play, with Chucky, because some of you all are acting so childish. I'm just shocked at some of you all. You're disrespectful. You know, you're obnoxious, egotistical, arrogant. Get rid of that. We are trying to do what's best for the children of Richmond Public Schools. We can't wait. 
with your can't wait, and all of Richmond Public Schools can't wait because some of you all want to act like a bunch of children in a sandbox. If you want a new George Wood, please stand. Jamie Weinstein. I'm a resident of the 5th District, south of the James, 
and I'm connected to Georgewood High School as a parent owner, a mom to two boys, and also as an art educator here. I am here to ask the five school board members who voted to take over construction to work with the mayor's compromise as you move forward and secure positions of your own. For the past six months, I feel that you have misled the public. First claiming the evils of prototypes, then asking why a legal document couldn't, been, couldn't just be turned over to you, then claiming there was no money to fund the project, and now it's a matter of the mayor showing you respect. I brought some things to show you. This is a tank top I wear that goes under this shirt because my clothes are always getting holes in them here. From getting caught on the countertop, on the door frame, so clearly you can see I have this shirt, I think, three times over. I just put things under it because it keeps getting ripped. Next, I want to show you the face mask that I wear and these gloves that I buy in bulk to clean up the rat droppings that are in my room. So I have adequate places to store the student artwork. Start all, this is a project that we made here. This project is made from recycled paper because I don't have a kiln and I still need to fulfill my 3D art SOL. The money is available. Where is your sense of urgency? Where is the sense of justice and love for our kids at Georgewood High School? I believe you owe the public an apology for the amount of time and energy you've put us through playing these political games. I implore you to work with the mayor and build Georgewood High School now. Thank you. David Lee, followed by Don Williamson. Thank you, Ms. Weinstein. I was grateful when we have our leaders in the building, our teachers, uh, come out. Thank you. David, yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor Rock, Superintendent School owners. Uh, first, I'd like to say, on the 47 years I've been in Richmond, being one of the proudest, I think, achievements was seeing Richmond School Board in Richmond City of Richmond build three schools in one time. So with that being said, what's the difference in then and now? I see the same superintendent with just a few different school board members. So I ask myself that question, well if we had the same school board members or certain different school board members with the same superintendent, would we really be fighting for one school? We build three at one time. After after sitting back praying on it, thinking about it, I really actually see for what it is, especially someone that uh, put their head in that race. It's a lot more going on behind that curtain than what people see. There's a lot of groups and people that don't want to see this school be built. Something like black. Something like black. And it's because of who goes here. Black and brown kids. We can argue about it, we can talk about it, we can go all day long about it. But it's, it's, let's just make it real something like black. That's what it is. And the only difference building three schools at one time and building one school right now is certain school board members. Let's just make it simple and plain. We can argue about it, we can talk about it, but we've seen it done. We've seen three schools being built at one time. We've seen it. Everybody in the room. So what's the excuse now? So I just want to leave you with this. Every time I hear, I teach this to my, every kid I mentor to my own kid, everything I the but is an excuse. So every time you tell me something, you say, but, but, I know where excuse is coming. Leave the excuses alone. The best excuse is no excuse. If it costs a little more, so be it, get it done. Because at the end of the day, those kids depend on you to get it done. Not to feed your friends, not to feed your group, but to get it done. Real simple, right? We can argue about it all day long. So I, 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 one thing I, I'm never going to do is beg anybody. But I'm going to pray for you that at the end of the day, when you lay your head on your foot at night, that you know that at the end of the day, the most important thing that you do this for is those kids. So the same way we did it back then, we can do it again. How about that? I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Jen. Mr. Clark, here is next on the list. And uh, Shade, thank you.
Uh, thank, really, Dad, is that you, sir? Come on down, Mr. Williamson. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Dad Williamson. I'm a fifth district resident, an RPS parent, uh, political scientist teaching at the University of Richmond. In the last few weeks, I've heard a lot of rhetoric that local democracy is in peril because citizens are criticizing the decision of five members of the school board to pass a ordinance regarding school construction. But the most fundamental right in democracy, other than the vote itself, is the right to contest power decisions. And we know from our own history that sometimes democratic majorities just get it wrong. Here are the facts of this case. Schools construction is a shared responsibility under the Virginia Constitution. Yes, the schools may assume total control over the process of building schools, which is a goal in the long run I would support. But the city of Richmond must provide the money. That means the mayor and the city council are necessarily involved because by law they control the money. The mayor and city council, as stewards of taxpayers' money, have a legitimate interest and making sure money appropriated is used in an effective and timely way to get things done to benefit the community. This instance, timely means getting this school, George Webb, rebuilt by the 24-25 academic year. Here are some more facts. The mayor got more votes in the last election than the five members of the school board to pass the April resolution combined. So did the seven members of city council to support the city position on this matter. In fact, if you add up those totals of all the elected officials known to support the city's position, including school board members, it's nearly four times larger than that of the five members of the board support the resolution. We as a community voted for all of you, and we expect you to work together for the shared common good, especially in matters in which your respective duties conduct your overlap. So to claim that the current school board position exclusively represents the will of the community in this matter is at best far-fetched. What we have is a situation in which the governing bodies disagree. It's not the first time this has happened, nor will it be the last. In a situation like this, responsible governance entails two things. One, going to the community to find out what we think. And second, seeking compromises that can meet as many concerns as possible without jeopardizing commitments that have already been publicly made to the community, specifically to work with the community. Until uh, this evening, the school board majority did not consult the community on this matter which is driven through with no public engagement and minimal deliberation against the professional advice of the school's administration. And the good faith efforts at a compromise were made in May by the mayor and city council leadership have yet to be formally responded to by the school board, which is shameful and disrespectful, not only to the other governing bodies, but to all the citizens of Richmond. Very few people in this audience tonight care about who exactly is responsible for what in the school building process. What we want is a new school. And even if all the criticisms that have been made of prior school construction processes were accepted as fact, they don't warrant a delay in this process. Further, the idea that when schools build schools, it will all go perfectly well is also a fantasy. RPS has enough challenges dealing with its own internal systems with, in the areas already under the direct control. And I say this not as criticism of RPS, but a fact, because government work always has challenges. The responsibility of public officials is to work the problems through including disagreements with other governing bodies. Given the enormous and frankly more important challenges our community faces at this current moment, like supporting the 25,000 kids who have been out of school for more than a year as they return to the buildings in a few weeks, dropping everything to take over school construction in total cannot be the top priority. The obvious solution to the challenge at hand is to forge a compromise that allows with the go forward on time while preparing RPS to transition to taking full control over the process once it's developed the requisite staff capacity to undertake that responsibility without jeopardizing other important priorities. It's not too late to listen to the community and do the sensible thing, the right thing, the thing this community needs and is rightfully demanding. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Charles Willis, followed by Jonathan Davis. Reverend Willis. I'm glad my pastor's not following. You call me Reverend, he's a pastor. But that's, uh, that's all right, I take that, I take that. God bless you uh, to all board members. Mr. Chair, those are some of my name is Charles Willis, Executive Director of United Communities Against Crime, who I represent today, and also President of newly 
elected Richmond Highway Neighborhood Civic Associate in the mighty, mighty 8th District, where our distinguished representative Don Page uh, supports us. One of the things I found out that you're going to hear today, a lot of comments, so I don't want to repeat a lot of what's been said. I'm not even talking to the four, four board members, even in the absence of Madam Cheryl Burt, our school board chair, God bless her, and I keep her in my prayers, and I ask that everybody that would also. So my comments today is not to the four that voted against the resolution. My comments is to those five, even those that are watching. I learned that even when you come to form city council on the board, you either come to inform or be informed. I don't even expect you all to change your vote. I've already spoke to one school board member that is absent and asked her, and she said, no one has showed me anything to change my vote. What do you mean showed you anything? The mayor just asked you to come let us reason together. That's all, come to the table. I want you to know we had war, but the war is not gonna be won on the battlefield. The war is won at the table. You have to come to the table and reason together. The kids are watching. Every last one of you all, of those that are in this vicinity of my boss, if you've been in my company, you wouldn't know, know what type of work I do. As Richmond's only homicide victim advocate, well, I take that back, because there's another one, because Sherry Robinson is here. God bless her. But when we go on the battlefield and we deal with families who are bereavement, during tragedy times, and people ask and say, why is there so much crime in our city amongst our young people? And I say to them, and I say to you all, the reason why we have so much crime is because of the same reason why we got five board members that just didn't want to come to the table and sit and talk about it. Our young folks see us, and they see us, and they say, they act like children. You know one of the things our young folks say to you, and they really mean it? If young folks were standing here today, if the teenagers that you be talking about that commit certain hindrance crime would have a conversation with you, you know what they tell you? They tell you, you're doing too much. And when they tell you you're doing too much, they mean you are really doing too much. And they sick and tired of it. Some of y'all are doing too much. And then they'll tell you, you're in the way. That resolution is in the way. It's in the way of having a George Bush built in a sufficient time that is necessary. And then they'll tell you, you don't feel it. And they don't mean touch them. Please don't touch them. That means you don't understand their heart. You don't understand what they're going for. So that's how some of us feel in the community board members. We feel like you don't understand. We feel like you, you don't feel us. We feel like you're doing too much. And then when it gets like that, the children understand very cl clearly that when mama send you out, you arguing amongst each other, they send you to the bedroom so you can get it straight. Because if you don't get it straight and you come out that room, she gonna whip your hind pops. I feel like I need to send five of y'all in the room and get it straight, and if you come out and ain't got it straight, I need to whip your hot pots and send you right back in there. We got to get it straight, folks. Because the kids ain't scared of nobody. Let me tell you how it goes. When the kids ain't scared of nobody and they sitting there watching this foolishness now, this smoke screen right here, because that's all it is, because you're not going to change your mind. So we are up here just to say, oh, we had a meeting. We finally did meet with the board and the community, but you're not going to change your mind because you got your own personal agenda. But let me tell you what happens with folks when they understand, when the young folks are watching, and they're not afraid, and they're not afraid, this is what they do. The fear is right here. The teachers are not, the teachers are scared of the principal. The principal is scared of the superintendent. The superintendent is scared of the boy. The boy is scared of the parents. The parents are scared of the kids, and the kids ain't scared of no darn bad. The kids are watching us. We got to get together. I'm ashamed that we cannot even decide to come to the table and let us reason together. From us in the fifth and eighth district, I said to Ms. Rizzi, and I do commend you, Ms. Rizzi, you did have a meeting. You did meet with us. I, I do commend you for that. And you got yelled at, and you took it. And for that, I do respect, because if, you, if you're in the seat, you take the heat. All I ask is that you come and hear from us in the 8th District, those that specifically is in this building. I talked with the council member. I said, would you have that conversation? She said yes. To Ms. White, I understand schools need to build schools. I understand. But I really think 
that you have a mind of reason because at one time you used to sit here and fight right at this side about being heard and, and, and for the children. So I'm not saying you're against the children because I have not heard you say not Bella George Wilson. But I am disappointed that you voted with those that said we don't want to come and reason together. And then I'm going to end with this. I had a chance to have a copy of the mayor's letter. Ladies and gentlemen, please get a copy of the mayor's letter. Because we are here to smoke scream about the letter. If you get a chance to look at the letter yourself and read it, all the mayor asked was that we come to the table and let's put some things together. The mayor's letter does not say anything about taking control of the other schools. God bless you. Thank you so much. Come on, let's sit at the table for we whip your heart right. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Willis. Uh, next up, I think we have somebody with an outstanding first name. Jonathan, please. Jonathan, how are you? I'm <laughs> doing well, my friend. School board members, it's an honor to be here to stand before you this evening. And um, I wish I wasn't coming to you under the circumstances that I'm coming to you under. Um, my name is Jonathan Davis. I'm the president of the Richmond Crusade for Voters. Like most Richmonders, thank you. I've been watching, reading, and discussing this debate over the building of George Wood High School. I have many concerns with how this has been portrayed and how members of this board have not been willing to come to the table with the mayor and, dis and discuss how to get this school built by 2024. So from this delay, it has already pushed it to 2025. So we need to really come to the table, work with the mayor, and work this out. I understand the school board has the legal authority to build schools, and I'm supportive of that, very supportive of that. But not until after George Wilson has been settled. I have not seen or heard a valid argument or a point that justifies you're not working with the mayor and the citizens of Richmond, the citizens that are in this room, the citizens of the South Side. If the issue is over who controls construction, who has awarded contracts, delays in school construction, failed inspections, conflicts of interest, in construction spending, all of this can be worked out by making sure that you are at the table and overseeing every step and every dime. School board members come to the table, work this out. The RFP has already been presented by the mayor. The ball has been handed off to you. Take it, make a play that will make all of us proud of this board. Right now, you seem to be taking a play out of the Republican playbook in Washington, D.C., which is a cause of unnecessary gridlock, refusing to work for your constituents, refusing to be reasonable. I do not understand, and I certainly hope that personal feelings or vendettas or agendas has not taken the precedence over the concern for our children. This is a matter that needs urgent attention, and we're not seeing that from you. Yesterday I heard a young man um, named Lawrence and Madam, he put it in these terms. It is a matter of education or incarceration. And Charles also hit on that as well. Do you see what is happening to our youth since the pandemic and the ready supply of guns in our neighborhoods? You couple that with the many other after effects of 2020 and I cannot see why you're not operating with a sense of urgency. This situation, this matter will put a permanent stain on this board and the city of Richmond. Please put petty politics aside, put aside your promises to anyone other than the citizens of this city and in this matter, George Whittle, and get this school built. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, Dr. Sunday Harris, who is next on our list? I lost you. Not sure where in the room you are. No, you're in the room. So. Oh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Sandra Antoine. I am a 1974 graduate of George Wood High School. 50 years ago. I would have the opportunity to step 
in the front of the building, through the doors in the front of the building, and was reminded not to step on that symbol on the floor because it represented the character of this school. I look back and reflect on the being that bulldog. So excuse, I'm like apologizing for the bark because the, our educators here taught us how to do that. They taught us to stand up as students first and foremost if we saw a need to have change. So in this cafeteria, the students of George Wood High School did a city because we demanded that certain things be made, changes be made. This is after the forced busing, the integration of this school. Our administrators listened. Because what we said is we wanted a quality education. We wanted to be productive students. And we were willing to prepare for the fight in life beyond these doors. Georgia has produced some of the most finest students because we had the type of teachers, administration, and a school board that listened. We've had lawyers, judges, doctors, educators that have even returned back to the school. But more important, just as equally important, we've had soldiers. Yeah, we've had soldiers. They taught us, and our Uncle Sam would teach us. First, I was taught as a soldier in this school because we were the first high school in the country to offer rocks and JRTC to girls. We were the pilot program. And because we did so well, they allowed us to have a Roxy program. We've served our country. We've served our community. And I look back even on the life of a student from George Wood High School that would become the youngest victim of a war after she graduated to serve this country. We're looking at the same structure. We're looking at the same walls, the classrooms, and I am one of four generations from this school, including a principal. Because my uncle was a principal here as well. So I'm saying, you know, this is not about who likes who and who gets along with who, because the politics of it all, because those of you who know me know I like to fight. I like a war. Uncle Sam taught me that. So I'm willing to stand up for the students, but I'm also willing to say, I respect you. I respect authority, because that's what we were taught as well. All I'm asking you is to first and foremost respect the authority of the students that demand and deserve an environment conducive to learning, but to also a place that's sometimes better than what's outside that door from where they come each day. So I'm asking you to please come to the table with the mayor. Have a compromise. Because in this one city, we are a community. But the one thing that stands out about a community is having common unity. Thank you. And now, Adam Booth, followed by Representative Stephanie Lynch. Good afternoon. My name is Deborah Red Book. I am a member of the Swansboro West Civic Association. I'm also chief of the electoral board for the last 30 years. And I am very disappointed in what is going on in this school system with the school board and the mayor. A lot of things that I want to say have already been said, but I want to say this and I'm going to be done. This visit, I would like for you to vote with the people that are in your district. Thank you. Council Member Lynch, followed by Corey Stephan. Thank you, ma'am, and uh, Ms. Lynch, uh, always a pleasure, but before uh, you 
convener remarks. I do want to acknowledge the aforementioned Ms. Cheryl Burke has joined us. Uh, my, re my request, my plea for your prayers uh, must have worked, uh, Ms. Burke. <laughs> Glad to have you. Please. My heart lifted a little bit when I saw you walk behind the curtain, Ms. Burke. You know, nothing could keep me from this. <laughs> nothing could keep me from this. And I'm so thankful to be here this evening and thankful to see everyone a little sore. You have to be careful with your ass. Yesterday, my air conditioning wasn't working well in my car. And I told my husband, it's time for me to get a new car. <laughs> so who would have thought? <laughs> Five blocks from my house today, I took this total. But God is good. No one was seriously hurt. We all just saw. Him. So I'm good. Thank you all so much. Appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. So glad to see you and see that you are well. Well, the school board members, um, I am the representative for the 5th District, where we sit down. Um, but today I'm speaking to you as a parent. I was late getting here. You know why? Because I have a nine-year-old who's about to turn 10. We were fighting over reading a chapter book. You see, he's in summer school this year. Thank you for having summer school, Superintendent Cameron, and thank you school board members for voting for that. He's one of the 500 students that's enrolled. He's a J.F. Fisher. We drop him off every morning, and we pick him up in the afternoon, and we'll be doing that until summer school ends. We're making him read. We're trying to make him read at least 30 minutes a night. The reason why is because his reading comprehension, and this is shameful to say, this hurts as a parent, hurts my heart to say this, but his reading level is now two grade levels behind. His teachers did an amazing job. The school system did an amazing job supporting him, but this virtual learning was really, really tough for him. And now I'm figuring out how to catch him up as are his summer school um, teachers, how to catch him up. And I'm thinking to myself, he stopped going to school uh, in person when, he's in third, when he was in third grade. Okay, how many other students are struggling like him? How many other students don't have parents or the resources like him? I can tell you that's a lot because I'm a social worker and I see the other side of it. And I'm also a representative of a district where we have a lot of students who are struggling, and I get those stories. We've had shootings, we've had our students in this very high school, how many, Charles Willis, too, who have passed away from gun violence. We are grappling with insane, insane amounts of challenges that our children, our students, our families are having to deal with. And you know what? I calculated, I sat and I calculated how many hours we spent talking about the construction of this building and whether or not schools should build schools. It's been over 150 hours. I look around and I see community members and talent and brain power in this room that can solve damn near all the city's problems. Yeah. If you're in all of that time focused on the on the thing that matters most, with it, which is our students. And instead, we've been sitting here quarreling over who's building the schools. Over what, a couple million dollars? Is it worth it? So I'm asking you now, now as a city council person and as a parent, who is also the chair of the Education and Human Services Committee, who's the oversight body for public education and human services in the city of Richmond, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? Do you guys want to be co-chairs of a committee where we scrupulously review all of the costs together? Do you all want to lead a community engagement team where we continue to get feedback from our community members, where we build a jobs and training and trades program so that our students can actually build their schools and get, and get trained while they do it? Do you all want to get together and figure out a pathway forward of how to eventually transfer these departments to the school board. Let's do it. What do you what do you all need? Whatever it is, we can figure it out. But I can tell you that the most important thing is that student that comes home every day trying to figure out how to read, what kind of job he's gonna get, what kind of person she's going to become. That's our most important focus. And what's our plan for that? 
and let's devote our time and energy and resources to the things that matter most and get back on track. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Lynch. Yes, sir. Mr. Stuckey, you think? Yes. Um, as y'all know, my name is Corey Stuckey, and I'm not here representing myself. I'm here representing my teachers, my community members, and also my fellow students who just graduated from George Whitman and the students to come. I just graduated from this school, and I'm ashamed to tell people that. And the reason why I say that is because when people look at George Whitman, all they see is a hood. You think that Hillside is a hood, or that, or that Blackwell is a hood, or that Wilco Court is a hood? No, George Whitman is a hood. That's what it looks like. It looks exactly just like a hood, and that's, and that's a shame. That's a shame that it looks like that. It shouldn't look like that. You know, this school is supposed to breed excellence and breed power. Black power, come on now. All the students that go to the school are predominantly minorities, come on now. And as you said before. Dave, Dave, Mr. Stuckey, please, for a moment. Uh, I apologize. Uh, Mr. Stuckey has some really important remarks that need to be heard. I just request of all of our neighbors, please allow him to speak without being interrupted, if that's not too much to ask. Thank you, Mr. Stuckey. And as I was saying, this is a shame. I should see kings and queens coming from the school. Not I should be scrolling down Instagram and seeing my fellow brothers and fellow sisters pass away from gun violence. The school is where it happened. Do you not realize that we spend most of our lives in school as teenagers and as young kids? This is where we, this is basically our home, not my house. I see my mom when I come home when she off of work, but this is my real home. I'm here most of the time. My teachers are my moms and my fathers and my brothers and my sisters. And as someone said earlier, the teachers are scared of the principal. Then the principal is scared of y'all, and y'all scared of each other. For what? I'm confused. Why are y'all in-house fighting? That makes no sense. What example are you setting for us? What example are you setting for other teenagers that want to be sitting in the seat that you're sitting in one day? What example are you setting? And then you get mad at the teachers and say that they're not doing their jobs, but they, they're only doing what they can with what they got. You're not giving enough. You're not giving a new facility. You're not giving them the resources they need. Not giving them the finances they need, so what are they supposed to do? You want to look at SOL scores? Yeah, look at them. They're bad. That's right, they're bad. Because the school materials are bad. The textbooks are bad. The desks are falling apart. Look right over here, our seats are falling apart. How do you have a caution sign on the seat? I'm going to ask you a question. Did you really walk through the building when you came to sit down today, or do you just come straight in the auditorium? Did you walk through the gym and see how the ceiling is basically leaking enough water to almost fill it up as a pool? Did you see the cracks on the outside of the building? Do you see the cracks on the stage you're sitting on? Did you walk behind the stage and see how the walls have mold behind it? Do you want the bathrooms right there? Because I can tell you where everything is at. I just was in the building this morning. Do y'all see it? Or do y'all just see a whole bunch of people sitting out today just talking your heads off? Y'all just running down, y'all checking out emails. What are y'all really doing? Because please, I, I beg of you, please put the money in our hands. We'll get the school built right now. Please put the money in our hands. Because we're tired of waiting. How can you sit here and wait? How can you sit here and continue to let kids die knowing that it's because of the fact that this George Wood building is falling apart? Because of the fact that this building looks like a prison cell. You want to wonder why, why so many kids are going to jail? Because they're being bred to be prisoners. That's not fair. It's not fair to me, it's not fair to these parents, it's not fair to the community member, and it shouldn't be fair to yourselves. My mom asked me today, when I cursed in the house, she said, how can you look in the mirror at yourself after saying that? And I'm asking you, how can you look in the mirror after voting against the building George with? How can you? How can you? Y'all was kids once. Y'all know what it feels like to be in high school, middle school, elementary school, y'all know how it feels. Do so you actually know how it feels for the students of this school? Do you think that this school is safe as of right now until that students come back in here? I really, I really want y'all to think about that when y'all go home tonight. Our students are tired. The community's tired. We're tired of even having these meetings right now. I'm tired of having to come to speak because I'm tired of it. I'm saying the same thing over and over again. For what? Y'all heard me the first time I said it. Y'all heard me the first time everybody else said it. 
We need a new school now. With can't wait. That's just a trend for y'all. It's not. It's not a trend for us. With can't wait. Can we wait, y'all? No. Can we wait, y'all? No. The community is spoken. We have spoken, y'all. We elected you to serve us, to serve our community. We spoke it. We want to with now. So what is the wait? What is it? I have fellow students in the, in the stands right now. And they can tell you the same thing when they come up here, that this school is incapable of getting the proper education in. Incapable. Textbooks dating back to 1965. That's that's in the same spot as my, my teacher walked through the halls. Pictures in the same spot. Come on now. Y'all know it don't sound right. This sound like a movie to y'all, don't it? Because it is. Please wake up, please open your eyes. And we're like, this is real life. We need a school building now. My teachers need one, my student needs one, and I need one. Because when I come back, my baby brother's still here. He's gonna be here real soon. And I don't want him walking through these buildings. Just best believe when I come pick him up from school, if I see the same building, we're gonna have a problem. Because I don't need to see that. Because one day, I'm gonna be the president. And I'm gonna be the mayor. I'm gonna be the governor. I'm gonna be something. I'm gonna make sure all of my community, all of my community don't have to worry about this ever again. Cause this is nonsense, the fact that we gotta sit here and begging for a school that we rightfully deserve. Basically got on our knees right now, begging for a school, and I don't get on my knees for nobody. And I'm sitting here up here begging out for a school. A school that was on a list to rebuild for how long? Thank you. 30 years. Matter of fact, don't even put a date on it. It needs to be rebuilt. And my last point to y'all is, as y'all look across and you see today and you see everyone's eyes and frustration and anger, that's not because of fear. That's because of pain. We're tired of being pushed back. We're tired of being held on. We're tired of being stopped from deserving what the hell we deserve. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. We're tired of it. And we need that school now. That's all I'm gonna say. Thank you, Mr. Stuckey. I hope folks in attendance can hear the Madam Clerk if I cannot. Uh, who is next, Madam, Madam Clerk? I am. Very good. Yes, sir, please. Uh, first off, I want to say something to Corey. Corey, you don't have to be ashamed to talk to us. Whatever you do, we hold you here now. George Bush loves you, Whitman loves you, none of But don't you ever go around telling nobody to shame where you came from. You are who you are. All right? Don't you ever say that. Ever do. Good evening. I'm Reverend Gary Dallas, and I come to you from the Children's Right Foundation as the Marching Sisters of Virginia. But today I'm actually coming to you as a spokesperson for the five schools in the East End I represent as being the BTO president. Though George Whitman, the conversation we're having this afternoon, I personally want to come to you about something a little bit bigger the city of Richmond. The longer it takes for George Webb, the longer it takes for Armstrong. Being the PTA president of five schools in the East End, Armstrong High School is the only school inside the city that has three major projects that feed it. I don't think you all understand the kind of atmosphere that breeds. Crime, violence, you all know the deal. Right now, we're in a situation to where you all have the power right now to shape Richmond for the next 50 to 100 years. Now, you ask me how is that possible? I will sit back and I will tell you, 115 years ago, school board members from the city of Richmond decided to build Albert Hill, Smartsboro, and Bellevue Elementary, respectively. They had no idea that when they made those decisions over 100 years ago, that those schools would still be in play today. Understand that your decision that you make right now or your lack thereof and your lack of action thereof can affect us today, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now. When you say George Whitman can't wait, Richmond can't wait. We're looking for Richmond to be a tier one city. And what I mean by a tier one city, a city in which all people inside, our, inside of our fair city thrive. We thrive because we have an educational system that is so robust that it will draw industry to Richmond. When industry is brought to Richmond, then our parents have a better job, have a better chance of getting better opportunities to feed their families when they have better jobs. 
our children once they graduate? And I have to ask this question. Once our kids graduate from high school, what's the end game? What's the end game? Right now, our kids can't even sign their name on a piece of paper. We're not teaching cursive writing. All right? So when our kids leave here, what's the end game? The housing market inside the city of Richmond for a one bedroom apartment is $1,400. When our kids come out of school with no education, but a, with a, oh my goodness, a backed up education. I'm not even going to say what I want to say. I say I'm going to say a backed up education. What kind of money can they earn to where they can, what kind of job can they find to earn enough money to pay them $1,400 a month for rent or a mortgage? What kind of future we set for? By holding back on the building of George with high school, we're not just affecting the children, we're affecting them and their families. Their parents need a community center. The school now is not the same school we had back in the 70s and 80s. And trust and believe, I was in this building back in 1978. I was here in 1979. I was here in 80 and 81. My son, he was here in 99 and 2000. Now my grandson is slated to be here as well. If my grandson that is nine years old ends up in this same building, it would be a crime. Not only will be a crime, it will be a shame, and I will hold all of you accountable for that. Because today, you have the opportunity to make a difference. You can either have all these people at you, calling you every day, and calling you out your name, and calling you, and Ms. Rizzi, I gotta tell you, sister, you took a lot of heat at that meeting the other night. God knows you did. God knows you did. And I appreciate you for taking it, and for listening to me, because that's what it's gonna take. You are listening to us. Now, if you want us off your back, if you want us off the back, build this school. Get it done by any means necessary. Brother Cameron gave us a dateline saying that if we don't get moving right now, we're looking at 2027. Well, that means that Armstrong is going to be in 2040. How about Bellevue Elementary? How about Fairfield Elementary? What about Woodfield Elementary? Look at our kids who are going from a brand new George Mason Elementary to a brand new MLK Elementary to a 60-year-old Armstrong. I think we are moving in the wrong direction. People, I'm not talking to children. And the great thing about it is, as I look upon you, some of you I just met recently, others I've known for as long as almost 50 years. We can do this. But we have to do it together. Ladies, gentlemen, listen to your public. You cannot be wrong by listening to all these people. Feel George Wilson, feel the wisdom, feel the Thank you so much. And Newton, followed by Judy Argentino. Hello, uh, <clears throat> my name is Judy Argentiano, and um, went through 12 years of Richmond Public Schools a number of years ago. Um, and then I was gone for a long, 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 long time, moved back, and was really impressed and happy to see how much the city has changed for the better. Um, and uh, now I live right down the street from George West, and I sort of feel like, you know, you know, I didn't graduate from here. I feel like it's kind of my school too. Um, so that's why I came to this meeting, and because I just care, you know, care about the city and I care about the schools. Um, so I just have, um, I just have a question, really, which I don't expect you to answer right now, but. If part of the concern is that the school board can build it for less money than the city, I mean, I know there are cost overruns, but I don't understand how the school board is going to be able to save money if you have to hire all these professionals who don't come to you, you know, to, to get it done that the city already has in place. 
mean, they're already there. And I, so I just went, huh? <laughs> so that's my question. And it seems to me like it only makes sense to take advantage of the resources that are already there. Um, and, you know, certainly tax dollars, you know, <laughs> Richmond's got a, a, you know, Richmond and revenue tax revenue, always a struggle for lots of reasons. Might as well, you know, use, use what we got. So that's all I have to say, um, and I'll just say the same thing that that eloquent gentleman said before me, and I think we can do this, um, if we do it together. So let's do it together. Thank you. Ruby Argentinu, followed by Leticia Carson. Good afternoon, all praise to God. And every one of y'all school board members that sat here this afternoon, y'all go home, y'all live in the county, y'all got the finest ride, y'all live in a nice house, y'all children have to do not go to Richmond Public School. Go to the school in the county. And I'm here to tell you, I thank God that my granddaughter came out of the Richmond Public Schools when she did and graduated from Ken Reco High School. Because y'all was a pain. And I'm here to say today, I'm not here for myself. I'm here for the babies. Because those children, those children here today cannot get anywhere unless y'all get up and put up and build a new school and stop the bitch. Because y'all, how can y'all tell our children what to do? Y'all can come to my our house and say, okay, y'all got mold in your house. We gonna condemn your house. This school got mold in it. Y'all gonna condemn this school? We keep our children at home. First thing y'all can say, this child is supposed to be in school. Why? Why? Get sick. Go to the doctor. Half of them don't have insurance. The parents are struggling. We have a superintendent. He came here. He going to clean up. He going to make the schools better than what it was. Okay. He went to Carver Elementary School. He cleaned house so he said. He done this and he done that. But why can't he put his foot in and say, let's look at George High School. Let's build this school up. Let's build a new school. This school used to be an annex school from Chesterfield County. When I first came to Richmond, it was an annex along with Hubert High School. Y'all purchased the school from Chesterfield. Because had I know, I was dealing with a family that had the children went to Cuba, Richmond won. But Richmond got it. But what did Richmond do? Hey, nothing. All I can say, Joe Clark, get it, get it together. Because this is the not this does not make sense. We have to come in here today, stop doing what we have to do to listen to y'all, to check, please to y'all, please, please. Get this school together. We shouldn't have three to y'all. Like one lady that said, she was a 74 graduate here, yes, and she walked in 1974. And I'm standing here saying, yes, it was a military girl. And that girl, Leslie Jackson, which I'm standing in for, that girl dragged me from here. Can you mean she said, she said to me now, looking down at this ragged frontier school, falling down, for what? Because y'all don't want to do nothing. Y'all don't want to do nothing. And when y'all get in y'all car and go to the home, look at y'all children tonight and say, thank you. Thank you. Because y'all got something just in time. John Booth has school. There's crumbling roaches. Who want to eat food with roaches? Nobody. Y'all don't eat it. Y'all get in y'all car and go to lunch. What do y'all get? The time is lunch and they say, feed your pay and get a piece of lunch coming to school. Because they don't have this food to sit in with roaches on it, fest face. Do y'all want to eat it? Y'all, will y'all eat it? No. No, y'all wouldn't. And y'all wouldn't let y'all children eat it. And then y'all children want to look down on how many children want to sit in Richmond. Like, hey, you know, them children in the problem. We are not in the problem. It's you all that's in the problem. You all. Open your back door and stop coming in the front door. 
when you just came, when you came from, you came in the back door. Now you're walking in the front door. Now y'all want to say, hey, I'm so fine. Let our children be so fine. Let them be doctors and nurses. Let them sit there where y'all sit at. And one day, they're going to sit there and they will going to tell y'all, hey, y'all know how y'all done us? Do y'all know how y'all done us? Do y'all know? See what y'all did. Stand up and say, yes. So Joe Brown, let's get together. Superintendent, stand up and get and be a man. And like I said, everybody is still everybody. But y'all can put change on that door. Y'all can have policemen standing in uniform, say, get them up here, that these animals are something. You might put me in here, but I don't care. Because like this, I went to school in the country. In 1964, Reedsville, Virginia, North Lumber County, I had, I had a way at We had a school with put down stones in it. When we got a brand new school, what happened? The white lady used to ride over our school books. So, cause she was mad because we had a brand new school. So, honey, I'm here to tell every one of y'all, God gonna come down and he gonna see y'all in the rapture. That same way that this stuff happened, Lord, stop and take a look, honey, because that's not over here. And the same way that that building fell in, Lord, that condo, it's the same thing, because this school are not leaning on nothing. Not leaning on nothing. One wing in a crate. And y'all about to take me one more. Smoke it for the night. <laughs> Leticia Carson, followed by Tisha Irby. Hello, my name is Leticia Carson, and I went to George Bush. I graduated from George Bush in 2000. What I would ask you guys is to please do something. Like they say, it is mold and bread dropping in the building. That is unacceptable. How can a child be great in this type of environment? How can they grow with out of date? They don't even have the technology. I moved out of the city of Richmond when my son went to high school because I did not want him to go to Richmond Public Schools. I said, we moved in James River School Zone so he can get a great education. And what I realized is, and, and Chester said, they teach our kids how to be entrepreneurs and how to be people that, that start business and doctors and lawyers. Y'all teach our kids how to be production workers, and that's unacceptable. Look at this environment. How can they be great in this environment? Is a safety hazard? It, it, that's lawsuits on the city of Richmond. We will cost the city of Richmond more money. If y'all invest in our children, our youth, they will stay in the city. They will work in the city. They will provide more taxes to the city. We have to invest in them so they can invest in the community as a whole. Um, again, when you treat kids like the way you guys are treating our kids by not making the right decision to build George with high school, you're moving them, you're moving them to the prison pipeline of doubt. Education goes directly with violence, with gun violence in our community. If we give them something to live for, they will be great. They will be great. I strongly encourage each, every one of, each and every one of you to make the right decision. So please make the right decision because it affects everyone and the effect trickles down. George, look, did y'all take a look? They asked, did y'all take a look? And nothing has changed in 21 years since I've been here. And that's unacceptable. You have, did you guys have the same, did y'all make the same decisions when he went out with me? We have a lot of black and brown kids that's already stressed. They can't come home. They, they hear most of the time. Let's be honest. They're here a lot of times. Mold, that can harm a child. That can harm a person. That can cause illnesses. You have, God forbid, the roof fall on someone. That's, that's unacceptable. So I would strongly encourage you guys to make a decision, a, a decision and work with the mayor and support the mayor. And let's get George Woodfield because our kids deserve it. Our kids need it. We need books, the technology. George would have no technology. We can't compete with, with the world, with our building in this state. So again, I would ask you guys to 
Think about the safety of our children. Think about the future of our children. And think about this raggedy building that need to be gone. <laughs> Thank you. Keisha Irving, followed by Stacey Franklin.
I come, I was raised in the 8th district, and I live in the 5th district. I've only went to two schools. That's Blackwell Elementary and George Wood High School. I came to George Wood in 1969. We were forced to come to George Wood. I wanted to go to Armstrong, but I was forced to come to George Wood. When I came to George Wood, there was 80% white and 20% black. But by the time I graduated in 74, everything had been done. But we struggled to survive. Now, I am a minister at Boonville Memorial Seary Church on the 8th District on Richmond Highway. And I'm also a Richmond Public School substitute teacher. Amen. I've been doing this since 2007. I worked for the Internal Revenue Service 20 something years before that. A lot of teachers do not want to come to schools that are not cared for. The morale is down for teachers. And I'm a substitute. I go anywhere, especially in the South Side. But the morale is down and our children are suffering because some teachers don't care. But there are a lot of teachers who do care and that's why they stick it up. And I'm grateful to Dr. Mr. Camus um, because he has boosted us up some and we're pleased. But I went to George Will and on behalf of the 5th District and the 8th District and the 9th District, we need a new school. This is not about what we want. We are tired of hearing excuses. We have people who are supporting us. This is what I'm going to say. You've heard it before. Excuses are the tools of the incompetent. They build monuments for nothing. And those that dwell on them are seldom good for anything else. Think about the children. What about the children? God bless you. Brianna Maurice, followed by Chantel Winston. I'm here before you today because my teacher, Ms. Weinstein, told me about this meeting. I'm like, all right, this is an opportunity for me to speak my mind, speak my experiences. I feel that a lot of people have covered a lot of things, and so I'm just going to speak from my heart. And I'm going to tell you what a day in the life of, of going to Whitby is like. So, you come in the morning, you go through the backpack check, you walk through metal detectors like you're in a prison. You look at the walls, and they're just painted, they're drab, and you keep going, you go forward, you go to class, you hear the bells like you're in a factory. It's not fun. You go throughout the halls, and then you hear security guards yelling in your ear, and you go to class, Go to class, you go to class, it's the same thing over and over again. Oh no, you gotta go to the bathroom. So you go to the bathroom, there ain't no soap, there ain't no toilet paper, there ain't no paper towels. All the things that should be in here are not there. And then you go to lunch, you're looking at lunch hall, and you look up, and you see, we missing tiles from the ceiling. We are missing tiles from the ceiling, we have mold, we have grass, we have roaches. Had to go to gym class once, almost sat down in a seat that was full of pee and poop from rats. It is disgusting. And, are you on your phone?
would I be better prepared for life? Because honestly, I don't feel prepared for life because I had to watch my teacher struggle to provide for me because they didn't have the textbooks they needed. They didn't have the facilities that they needed. Ms. Weinstein put in so much effort to teach me and to make me the artist that I am. And now I'm going to BCU. I'm going to the big pool. Like, it's a fantastic art school. And I don't know if I'm prepared because this facility did not prepare me for what I need in life. And what needs to happen is this school needs to be rebuilt. I need to see some change. Because if I can hear stories about my teacher telling me about how they were bused to school, I think that perhaps the school facility might be a little too old. And I don't have much to add. I just wanted to speak with my heart, and I feel like I've said what I need to say. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Sam Campbell, Weinstein, followed by Sherry Robinson. Good afternoon, city residents, school board members. Um, my name is Chantel Winston. Um, I am an alumni of class of 1995, and I also have three children who, I also have three children who graduated from George River. I understand what was built 60 years ago. I understand that right now, to be honest, I had to go to the restaurant, but to hear bread droppings and all that other stuff going on, I don't feel comfortable using the restroom here, which shouldn't be. But I also hear everyone that has said true and valid facts, but they shouldn't have to plead and say please about a new George Whip. It's residents' money, right, that is going to have this school built, right? It's no excuse for it. It's no excuse for it. If it's residents' money, if it's adding value to the community, if it's housing the future, our children, it shouldn't be no excuse for it. Before I got that whip, I missed death twice that summer. And WIF was a safe haven for me when I got it. When you, when you come here and you see the school falling apart, how do you think this kids feel? Especially when you're coming out of a broken home with, with no father and a single mother who's trying to raise her children and she barely got the energy to do nurturing to her children. It's no excuse for this to go any longer. I'm not gonna stand up here and say, please build us anything. A mentor of mine said, what we make happen for others, God will make happen for us. So what y'all gonna do? The longer you take, the deeper the hope gonna get for you. And I'm not threatening nobody, I just believe in natural calm. So when you close your eyes, and you know that you play a part in this big decision because this goes, this goes beyond, this ain't about us. It's about the future. What are y'all doing if you really care for Richmond and the city, res city residents and the children of the future? It's no doubt about it. Be at the school now. Absolutely. Jerry Robinson, followed by... Vanessa, good evening, board members, um, Jason, um, all of my fellow colleagues here, um, the students, everybody that's here came today. First, I want to thank you all for coming and um, taking the time to um, listen to um, our concerns. Um, I've been an employee for RPS for now 22 years, and I've been at WIF since 04, 17 years. And when I walked in the door, we were having the same conversation we're having today. This school is horrible. It's unsafe. It's just, you know, a place where it's hard for you to focus every day. I would, I would um, ask you to come here and spend one day with us and see what it's like. I spent this afternoon um, creating signs to put on the chairs in here so people won't hurt themselves when they sit down in a broken chair that's been broken forever and a day. That's having been repaired. Um, 
It's horrible listening to students call mice their friend. Mice walking up the hall like they are part of this building. It's, it's embarrassing, it's hurtful, and it's really, it's very shameful um, to see our students to have to um, suffer from this type of an environment. Uh, I would suggest that you guys um, take some time to um, think about your decision that you've already made and just consider what everybody else has already said here on today. Um, also, um, just um, think about like um, the carpet in the main office, the cleaning of the carpet, the mold that you smell when you clean the carpet. It's what's under the carpet is the issue. That carpet has been here before I got here. It is horrible. One of the office associates have to take off work when they clean the carpet because it's so, the smell is unbearable. Right now, we don't have no AC in the office. Oh, it's cold in here, but it's hot in here. And we've been coming to the school, even during the pandemic, several days a week, working and trying to um, serve our students the best we can. It's just horrible conditions. The school is unsafe. We have over 76 doors. Impossible to man 76 doors in a school that doesn't have secure doors on. 76 doors where anybody could have the, uh, an opportunity to walk in here and do some harm to us, to our children, to our staff. It's unsafe. Um, I ask you guys to really consider the decision you made and just think about the children and the staff of Georgia. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Vanessa, followed by Shonda Gasson. Good evening. To all the elected officials, community partners in the city of Richmond, RBS community, my name is Vanessa Johnson. I am making a request for common unity for the RPS community. I am a proud RPS alumni parent of Thomas Jefferson High School, homeowner in the seventh district, city of Richmond employee and community advocate and volunteer. I'm requesting for all elected officials to work together for the welfare of the educational environment for all RPS children, students, and the community. It, this is my citizen request for the mayor's office, administration, and the school board to work together to build a new George with and all RPS schools, academic facilities, and for us to ensure that our students are in an environment that is healthy, safe, and conducive for their learning outcomes. Yes. This request is in, needs immediate action for all of us to work together to pave the way for a better life for our community, for our children, our future. Thank you. Shonda Jackson, followed by Michelle Mosby, and then our last speaker will be La Barbara Jones. I think I heard Miss Jackson, you're up next. Is that right? Shonda? Jackson. Miss Jackson. 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 Gaston. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Blessed. Good evening. How are everyone? Um, I want to say I have been a product of both environments, Richmond Public Schools and Chesterfield County. Um, I can remember as a high school student running track, we can never come to George with to run against the athletes because they had no track. So they would always come to the local. My daughter also was a product of Richmond Public Schools um, at Blackwood. My godson graduated from George with two years ago. And I used to always ask him, why don't you have a book bag when you're going to school? He 
to have no roots. That's ridiculous. It shouldn't take months or years to make a decision to build a school. The kids are a product of their environment. If, if they don't have anything to look forward to at home, it should be here. And this is my first time in the inside of George Wood. It's a form of imprisonment and enslavement for the kids. Why can't they have better? You walk outside, Melodian Village is right across the street. Where is the peace for the children? Where? If they can't come to school and be safe here, because when they leave, we all know what could be the things they go into when they leave from school. How can they be safe? All I'm just saying, it doesn't take all day to make a decision. Just do it. Just do it. Be blessed. My name is Morris White. We're part of the same organization. I had to sleep because I went to George Wilson, but I graduated from Utah. And I've seen you not be rebuilt, but I still see the same George Wilson. When I just walked through these halls after school, after school I got into trouble. I went to prison. When I just walked back through these halls, I had a flashback of prison, not school. I see bars, I see I see walls, the smell. The building smells like a prison. It's no excuse why it should not be rebuilt. I had a teacher tell me and take me and show me where he wrote his name on the back of the chair. Why is that chair still here? It just don't make no sense to me. That's all I want to say. Michelle, we have Michelle Mosby, followed by La Robert, La Barbara Jones, and I believe Mark Carson was the last person to request. Hello, everybody, school board members. Um, Y'all have heard it all. I mean, all jokes aside, you really have. I just want to say that when the election happened, I looked at the this, the eight women, and I got excited. All jokes aside, I did. I was like, it's eight women. And I am a woman, I am a single mother, I've divorced twice, and there have been moments when I had to make some decisions. I have been able to juggle a whole lot of things. I have put Misha through college, helped Misha start businesses, because that's what we do, ladies. We juggle, we make things happen. We don't do oars, we do ands. As a single mother, it wasn't, she doesn't get to college because I'm a single mom, nope. It was, this is what has to happen because this is what we do. So then, when I see that eight women, we got seven black ones. And that's where I was like, yo, this getting ready to be real good. Because at the end of the day, we are nurturers. We are and people. That's what we do. We are and folk. We make things happen that ordinary people can't make happen. And so I'm sitting here today, and I, I don't think the argument is that we don't want you to build schools, because I honestly don't care. I, I'm giving you the real. I don't care who builds the school. Where my issue comes in is that I believe y'all can do an and. I believe you can build the school now, and I believe you can work on a transition process to get it to a place where you take it over and do what you do. I'm just asking you to do an and. Don't stop the process. Allow George Wood, Woodville, and whatever else you all, school board has put in place to make happen. And as you do that, y'all do that whole transition plan so that you are prepared, you are ready, and when you take it over, it's no hiccups in it, because you can fly, because you've given yourself enough moment in time to do it correctly and to do it right. I'm asking you all to just please 
rethink your thought process on what you decided. Go back to the table one more time and say to yourself, we can do an A and Y'all. We can continue this process and we can make a transition plan, put our plan in place, and then as the Constitution, as whatever it is that says schools build schools, you do just that. But please, with and, and Woodville and every other school that the school board in its plan put in place, let's continue to do that. I'm just asking you to do what you all put in place. School board put something in place. Let's continue that and work and and. You all are and people. We are solution oriented. We are not stoppers. We are goers. We make things happen. We do things that, uh, that people look around and say, what's really going on? That's what we do. Jonathan, I, I like you, but this is, I'm latest. I need y'all to hear me because we do things differently. Ladies, we do stuff different. I'm asking you all to do something different with this. Go back to the table and make something happen that the common unity is asking that you continue your plan and make a transition plan. Because everything happens when we are better together. When we work with the administration, the mayors, when we work with council, when we work as a school board, nobody can lose y'all. They really can. I'm asking you to please, 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 please. And I'm gonna say please, I don't have a problem with please. Go back and do what I know each and every one of you can do. All of you are rock stars, make something happen. Please go back to the table and make something happen. Thank you. We have Barbara Jones, and our last speaker, Vice Chair Young, will be Mark Pearson. Hi, my name is LaBarbara Jones. I'm from my alumni. We went to school together. I graduated in 99. My mother graduated in 81. She was pregnant with me. School looked the same. 99 school looked the same. In 1995, Henrico School got laptops to take home for their students. They were donated. They said George Wolf would be getting them soon. I graduated. I was gone for 20 years. George Wolf never got laptops until the pandemic. We never got laptops to our students for 22 years until we had coronavirus. And we had to get it. Most of the kids didn't know how to work the laptops. They didn't have internet. They didn't have the basic needs skills because we 22 years behind. All the time, and it's not because y'all don't want to build a school, it's because the parents of these schools are working class parents. They're not affluent parents. They don't live on the Bonaire, Chesterfield line like other schools. They don't make the type of money that'll make you move in the right direction. So not only am I alumni for this school and my mother, but when my daughter went to go to high school, I could not let her come into school. I had a staff member, she died recently, and I believe she died from being in this school. She went over to Huguenot, and she had to beg to get over there, because she said this school was making her sick. And she died not even two years later. But she had been sick for 10 years trying to get them to transition her to another school, because this school was causing her damage. Her body was failing in this school. And by the time they moved her, it was too late. It was too late. The mold in this school had already got it. The rat feces. Sometimes I'm sitting and working in my office. Oh yes, I work here. I sit and I work in my office and you can hear the rats and the mice run over top of your head. When we leave out the spring break, I have to make sure I don't leave not one wrapper of candy because I give out candy to the kids. I have to put it up and take it away because when I come back, because they have no food to eat because the kids aren't here, they will ravage my home. They will rip up paper. You will come in and paper from your trash can is ripped up where they're trying to get in your trash can. They are looking for food for two weeks and then they're so happy when the kids get back. The mice, like she said, run up the hallway like they friends. Thank you for coming back to get to eat, man. And the change of the class, sometimes when they come into class, they're sitting on the desk with the teacher. Your kids do not have to live through this. Your kids do not have to deal with this. And it shows no empathy. And it shows no sympathy. 
and it's sickening and it's sad. My son is in the eighth grade, well, he's going to eighth grade. He's in the seventh grade to the ninth grade class. He was doing so well at Lucille Brown that Mr. Fung, the same one that was on TV with the young man who got a 5.0 and two associate's degrees while he was here. My son does not want to come here and work with Mr. Fung. He said, I can't come in that building. He said, Mom, the roach is the size of your thumb. He's not lying. The roach is the size of my thumb. Running through the building at all times. They try to put down stuff. They're dead. They're everywhere when they are not running through the building. So the money that you're trying to save, and I don't know how much money, you know, for real, I didn't even look up the numbers because I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Cuban I was built after George Bush, but again, we don't live on the bond airline. We don't have parents that are doctors and lawyers and work and make a certain amount of money that will come up there and really make their lives hell. We got people who work in two and three jobs just to make it survive, so we don't have time to keep arguing with you about a building. We're just trying to keep our kids in school and get them home, right? So we get punished for that, right? We get punished because I work two jobs and I can't come to PTA meetings. We get punished because I don't have time to send a phone and wait an hour to talk to somebody on the school board. I don't have time to wait on your email. I got a job to work. I got two jobs to work. My husband might have a job to work. My boyfriend might have a job to work. My mother is watching the two younger kids so she ain't got time to talk to you either. But I know you hear us. And like Cora said, nobody walks in this building. You send people here to get coronavirus shots, and I'd like to say, how could they send them in this filthy cafeteria? We are the ones. You sitting in here in the most disgusting environment giving out shots to people. It's so many health violations here. It's so many social justice violations here. In this moment, right now, as we speak, Equality, right? Equality is George Bush should have got a school because they had more than two. You're gonna have asbestos in their gym, not down their gym and give them a new gym. No, we're gonna give them a whole new school, build it on the light and side, let them continue to get their education because we don't want those parents at our door. We don't care about these parents being at our door. In fact, not only do we not care about these parents, let's shift the Spanish population to George Bush too. Because that happened too. When those parents didn't like all those Spanish children there, they moved them here. We just rezoned for no reason. We just happened to rezone after the Spanish population grew at the school. Okay, that's fine. I love it. For people, I'm not single. I'm learning every day. That's fine. Okay? So that's not my issue. My issue is you're doing this or not fulfilling the needs because of who you think we are. But let me tell you something, just like she said. We are strong. We are resilient. And we are not done by far. So the money that you believe that you're saving, how much will you save from a lawsuit when the building falls down? That's what I'm about. How much will you save when somebody just decides, you know what, this is a social justice and right issue, and maybe this should be a civil class action suit against you because you are human rights violations when you have feces on desks with students. When you, if you came in and urine and poo and pee was lined up on those tables, what would you do? You gonna say sit down and listen to all these people talk? No. No. But that's what you tell our students to do. You tell them to sit at a desk. When people get this, you treat them like animals. If you treat them like animals, they will be animals. If you invest in your in the future, they will be your future. You reap what you sow. You want good attendance? Because I've been a tennis worker, so I feel all that you give to us. If you want good attendance, give them a building that they how to come into. Give them a place that they feel safe. Give them a haven from the outside world. 
Attendance will never be at 94% and it will not stay at 90% here. Okay, I'm telling you, I'm an attendance person. I'm sure that I'm signing my death, but I don't care, right? Because I do this because I like it and because I love the students and because this is the school that I love and I hate to see it deteriorate. I've been here all year. Like she said, three, four times a week until I couldn't do it anymore because the building wasn't up to par. Can't sit in the gym when it's raining on my head. I can't work like that. I can't take that home to my kids. So you want things, you want good SOL scores, you want all these things. But it's amazing to me, if you had to work in that environment, you could ask somebody to ask anything of you. You could not go to your desk and it's 120 degrees. Oh yes, it got so hot that we didn't have Wi-Fi, we couldn't figure out why. It came, IT came from downtown. It was sweating in the walls and the wires was too hot. He said, if this was a regular building, we would have caught on fire. The only thing to save us was because of cement walls. It was so hot that it was sweating and the wires cut off all the Wi-Fi and electricity in the phones. Nobody should have to go to school like that and nobody should have to work that way. I will wrap it up, but I just want you to understand that you can sit here and make whatever decision you want, but you won't save money soon because eventually lawsuits are going to come because something bad is going to happen. This is the only, this is not, you can't keep bringing somebody in a building, like you said, that's holding on on a wing and a prayer and acting like it's nothing. You can't keep ignoring the human rights violations that you have. The current see it, I see it. So if you think that this is your way of saving or getting around it or whatever, it's not. It's gonna take more time. You might wait till 2040, you might wait till 2027, you might wait till whenever, but you're gonna lose the money anyway because the lawsuits are gonna be coming. It is a puddle in the gym. Kids come back in September. When are you going to fix it? You're not. They are. They are. They are. They are. No, they're going to give a new building or the money is going to go to the lawyers for the lawsuits that they're going to have. It's one or the other. It's one or the other. You can't have it both ways. You can't act like you're helping people when you're not. This country has a problem with doing it, you know saying they're going to give people stuff, especially minorities, right? Like a magic trick. But we're not into games and tricks anymore. It's over. It's over. You see it, you know it, you feel it. And if you don't get it right, it's going to be a problem real soon. You can keep your positions on the board, but the money is going to be gone anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Ms. Sade. Last person, the last speaker is Mark Pearson. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Pearson. I'm George Ware's class of 1974. And I guess that's back in the day, as they say. So uh, I, I always look forward to coming back to George Ware. I've been, uh, I've played sports here. I was heavily involved. I played baseball, tennis involved in the music program and uh, we went through the busing era uh, 1970 uh, George went there in 8th grade the ninth grade forced integration and uh, I had some of the best years of my life never missed a day of high school and as a student uh, I played sports for some great coaches and the coaches we supported all the programs all the football, basketball, baseball it was a collaborative effort, and we we won a whole lot of games. We won a whole lot more games than we lost. But coming in the doors, the gentleman, I, I shared a quick story. I said, these halls were our friends, but if we lost a game, we got to know the halls real well. We'd have to run win sprints. And so we started, we kept winning. But uh, a few things, I've, I've been involved since graduation. Uh, 
wait 40 something years ago. That's hard to believe. We sat in this building and this uh, auditorium at the great lectures here. Uh, as a uh, taxpayer, I, I live in the West Over Hills area, and I've been involved with the Booster Club. A few years back, we had a group of us that were still active. We support the students. We come back to the athletic events. We've given scholarships and uh, real good feeling. It, it, it's nice coming back, seeing the young people, and uh, it creates a lot of energy. Uh, in school, we need a new school. Uh, I was, before I came here tonight, I read a, there's a vision of George with High School that's on the internet. It says, we envision a school that provides each student with challenging opportunities in a culture where creating creativity, respect, and authentic enthusiasm for learning exist. One where all strive to be responsible, motivated citizens of strong character, one that embraces a strong partnership with their diverse communities, and one that promotes a passionate commitment to bulldog pride. I can say, uh, here it is, class of 74, I'm still in touch with teachers that I had, the principal of our school, Mr. Setti, still stay in touch with, we say yes sir, and Coach Booker, longtime friend, and we call each other, check on each other, and uh, the, the facilities here, I was here, uh, there were no computers, and if you can believe that, we're all on technology now, the cell phones, the, we're all on uh, every device, and the school the students this year have had tremendous challenges, everyone has the learning environment. We need to build a new school, it, it's keeping up with the time, this when George Wood, it's, it's definitely served, uh, it's had its better days, there was the technology back it wasn't around back then, but it needs to be updated, it needs to, to compete in a global environment. We need to have, we need to make an equal platform, there, there are great schools in the county, uh, coming back down 360 yesterday, I noticed a lot of new facilities in George with it's, it's due for change, if we need a new school, I think Y'all are smart people. I, I think the, uh, you deliberate, I think everyone agrees it should be done. It should be a yes, it should be a collaborative effort and get it done. The, the more, the longer you wait, the more it's gonna cost. We're at very low interest rates now. It's an uh, uh, opportunity to have build bids put out, contractors, will, I'm sure you'll get a, a lot of uh, qualified people that can build it, and if, if you build it, uh, you'll, you'll retain the excellent educators you have here. You'll make students want to come back and keep coming, look forward to coming to George Wood. The stories here, uh, I'll share one. I was, we were in the uh, cafeteria one night, and I'm with a, a lot of people have said it before, but it, it's a great concern that the place where you eat, we ate those same uh, the same dining hall, and there are two mouse, two mice scurrying about, and which is a health issue, and I'm, you know, everybody's aware of that, but, but we need to uh, get it done, and if I can, uh, growing up, we went through the civil rights era, if I can close with a comment from Dr. King, he said, the time is always right to do what is right, the time is now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Person. Uh, most grateful. Can't think of a better way to uh, adjourn a lot of very thoughtful, uh, considerate uh, comments, uh, a lot of passion, uh, and rightfully so. Uh, thank you to everyone who spoke. Thank you to everyone who did not speak. Uh, if you didn't have an opportunity to speak, uh, I'm confident my colleagues and I are most eager to hear from you. Uh, I'm going to now turn the mic over to our chair, Ms. Burke. Thank you, Mr. Young. Well done. Thank you all so much for being here this evening. Your passion, your passion, your passion. I heard you, and I'm sure I'm not the only one here that did. And we'll continue to hear you. Don't let tonight be the end of sharing your vision. All right? Thank you all so much.